Okay, good afternoon. I would like to continue the spirit of disciplinary mashup and present or talk about the risks and beauties of hyperpublic from an architect's point of view. And I would like to use a real project as a case study to discuss the issues. The case study, the project, is the design of a new campus in the deserts of Ras al Khaimah. In case, I'm not sure how many of you know where Ras al Khaimah is. Ras al Khaimah is a, one of the seven Emirates in the UAE. So it's located um, in the Persian Gulf. It is about one hour northeast of Dubai and two hours northeast of Abu Dhabi. In 2009, the Sheikh of Ras al Khaimah agreed to fund the joint development of a campus together with the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, EPFL, where I'm located, with the ambition to first focus on a few key academic issues that deals with the particularity of that site, with energy, solar energy, wind energy, um, water management, and um, urbanism in an extreme climate but then to later scale up to become a knowledge city. The site that was given is this uh, double rectangle here in the middle of the desert on a road that connects the new Ras al Khaimah to an airport that is now being constructed. We were asked last summer to look at the project and develop proposals or ideas of what a campus could be in this, in this century at this particular location. These are a few images from the site visit. So there's really nothing around on the desert, but it's a beautiful desert. At sunset, it becomes uh, completely red. The program itself is quite straightforward. There's a learning centers, which is learning activities, uh, auditorium, classrooms, libraries. Then there are labs around it, common social areas like cafeteria, prayer rooms, and uh, restaurants. And then major infrastructures and lodging and sports. Maybe the only difference is the strict separation of male and female students here. Now, the idea started with the, or the project the initial idea for the project was that rather than creating a typically closed, completely closed, gated um, campus, which pushes the ultimate of privateness, the project really started with the desire to do the opposite and explore how public could we go. Could we create a space inside the campus that would be more public than what is around it? We also wanted to avoid uh, typical developments in the Middle East that look like gigantic golf courts with some uh, houses around it, so resorts that uses a lot of green, which in turn uses, of course, an absurd amount of water and instead, we proposed a bottom-up data-driven approach where we map the climatic uh, particularities of the site, the wind, the water, the sun. Um, the ambition was to grow a campus where it makes sense ecologically. So to build um, buildings where there's natural cooling from winds or where there's natural shading from the topography and to grow parks where there's natural water from, from, from the rain or from the groundwater. Here you see a map of um, the water spots or the low points, natural low points where water naturally accumulates. And the proposal was to use these points and turn them into oases, micro oases, around which then the campus would be organized. So here are some uh, early visuals that have been created by one of our students, Jeanne Wellinger. So this is actually a project that we took on as an academic project with a design studio. Architecturally, the um, space is a large um, 
completely fluid, open space where the condition of seeing and being seen is uh, maximized. Essentially, it is a multiplication of another building, the EPFL Learning Center, which is the partner institution um, that Laurent also showed this morning, um, where, uh, again, you have a space without solid walls, everything is fluid. But you in, when you're inside, um, the complete publicness, the fact that you can see everyone and everyone can see you, is actually not disturbing at all, but rather gives you a sense of, of, of comfort, a sense of safety, perhaps similar to what you feel when you're in a Swiss city where everyone cares for you and is watching what you, a bit what you're doing. From a uh, digital technology point of view, um, the plan was to create a network of sensors that would sense um, the location, movements, and activities of people inside, so that the campus would have an awareness of what's going on inside and could greet visitors by the name of provide personal services, like un not unlike what you know from minority reports. Or you could find someone inside the whole campus by uh, conducting um, searches in real time, physical search. And by displaying uh, the data shadows of people, the campus or the buildings could also accelerate uh, chance encounters, perhaps, or um, uh, suggest affinities among people. Of course, if you have all those kinds of proposals, there's uh, the question of the risks um, and um, dangers of um, uh, privacy and privacy in, in uh, invasion becomes inevitable. And the question is really whether you actually, there is a necessity to actually design the, the privacy just like we designed the publicness, whether there's a necessity to have um, you know, little shelters, little walls, or even devices like scrumming devices, um, like this one, I think that Adam, you're involved in this project. Um, but our position is that there should be less and less even no necessity to design the private if and only if the publicness, the hyper, hyper pub publicness of the space is adequately designed. So if, especially if uh, there's, for example, no uh, central or private entity owning the data, or there's uh, full transparency over um, who looks at the data or what is actually being captured and made explicit and visible, such as in this art project by Marie Sester. Okay. Um, quick question for you. I've been to the Emirates only once, but the thing that struck, struck my memory is the high wall garden wall walls around every home and everything. How culturally do you enter this notion of hyper transparency into a culture that seems so closed behind walls? Well, this right. is a bit the, the whole premise of the project. Instead of gating what is inside the campus, to create a privacy or publicness differential that is larger inside than outside, right? But I don't think it's a problem over there. Crime rates are low, if that's the problem. Um, I, I don't know why the walls are there. I'm just saying the walls are there. So are you going to get, do you anticipate some resistance from local people to this very different view of their world? No. No, okay. <laughs>